she'll feel better. I didn't put anything on top of the Done by 7.35. I'm as ready as I'm going to be. Welcome to the East Bridge Road School Committee meeting of June 21st, 2022. At this time, uh, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And at this time, I take a motion to open the meeting. So moved. Moved by uh, Amanda. Second. Second by Gordon. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> welcome, everyone. Good to see everybody. Um, I, we have our, well, she's not new, but she's kind of new, <laughs> Lilia Fagundes, um, our student rep. Do you have a report for us? I do. Um, so all students, and I think the staff are very excited about wrapping up the school year. Um, the teachers at the junior, senior high school have their schedules, or class assignments already for the upcoming school year in the fall. And the students receive their schedules tomorrow, but it will have a list of courses, but does not include the teacher's names. Um, the eighth graders will get team assignments as well tomorrow. And then the seventh graders will receive their team assignments at step up day, which I believe is August 23rd. Um, the guidance staff will be in the building the rest of the week for any parents with questions or concerns. And um, Mr. Clements wanted to let everyone know that him, uh, Mr. Taylor and Ms. Anderson will be taking their time off, but will be back for any concerns during the summertime. Last week, the eighth graders, all their festivities ran smoothly with their field trip, dance, and graduation. And World Cup started today and will finish tomorrow. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. How's the, how'd the rest of the year go now that you're at the end? It went good. I think, yeah. Everyone wrapped up their final projects and everything, and everyone's excited. That's good. Yep. Are you excited for the last day tomorrow? I am. That's good. I'm glad you had a good year. Yes. Um, <clears throat> at this time, I see we have a lot of attendees in the audience today, a lot of retirees, which I'm sad to see you all go. A lot of, a lot of memories, a lot of memories in this high school. Uh, and this time I'm going to hand it over to Superintendent Lego, and she's going to, she knows you the best, so I'm going to allow her to speak about you because I can't do you justice, I'm sure. Except for Barbara, I can say nice things about because I work with you the most, but go know. ahead, go ahead, Superintendent. I don't know, uh, Ellen, if you want to go hand their bags oh, as, sure I, I as I speak to them. So first of all, congratulations to all of you. I know this is, it's, I should be bittersweet. I hopefully it's bittersweet for you that, you know, you, you feel as if you're, ready to go on a long vacation um, as we do every year and the, as the summer comes and then you, you come back and it starts all over again. Um, for me uh, and for the district on behalf of the district it is uh, bittersweet to see you go. Um, you all have uh, been a wonderful part of the East Bridgewater Public Schools histories and will always be part of the legacy that you leave, whether it is at the Central School, the Mitchell School, Junior Senior High School, uh, before and after, ESY. Uh, you know, Mrs. McDermott, I walked by your classroom the other day to say hello to you. You had a teacher in there, and you were at your back um, bulletin board. You have um, students that you had in the past that have sent you um, pictures, and you did not know I was there. And I watched you. Um, speak to another teacher for five minutes. You never turned away, and you knew where their houses were, what they did in high school, and a few where they went to college. Um, that's a tribute to you for understanding and knowing your children. And that's huge. You know, and you're the first uh, this evening that we'll talk about. Uh, you spent 22 years at the Gordon W. Mitchell School as a grade five teacher. Your years of service are from September 1st, 2000 to June 30th, 2022. I think some of the things that we, we know about you is you're a staple to the Mitchell School. You just don't take time off to take time off. You're a teacher that comes in every day. 
you talk to kids, you don't tell them what to do, you work with them, you facilitate your classroom. And one of the greatest stories that uh, I've ever heard you tell is that kids come to you when they leave, because you always tell them, when you leave Mitchell School, when you get to the high school, come and tell me when you're playing in a baseball game or a track and field meet or a softball game or a basketball game and I'll come and watch you. Not a lot of us do that. And that's so wonderful. And we thank you for that. And I hope that we see you again. And don't stop coming to basketball games and softball games and, and musicals and dramas, uh, because the kids do remember you. Um, we will remember you. And I wish you the best. And I, I see your grandchildren are here tonight. And, uh, and your family is here. And I, I, I wish you the best. And I, Dr. Williams, is there anything you'd like to add? No, I echo the sentiments. Actually, um, I need to give credit to Central School because they discovered Mrs. McDermott first. <laughs> <laughs> but all good things start at Central School. Um, and you know, to the superintendent's point, and I think I mentioned in your memory book, one of my very first school committee meetings, there were parents there, and they wanted to let the school committee know what you had done for their son. And they didn't speak about academics. It was the self-esteem that you gave him, the confidence that you gave him. Um, and uh, like I said, one of my very first meetings in your name was the name that was mentioned. So it always stuck with me, and I saw every day um, how you portrayed those same qualities to all your students. So thank you. We wish you the best. <laughs> Mrs. Nicandros, 20 years math teacher at the East Bridgewater Junior Senior High School. Years of service, September 1st, 2002, to June 30th, 2022. Kathy and I have a relationship that dates back to when I began in the district seven years as superintendent of schools. Kathy and I sat down in a very tenacious time um, when we were coming out of a, an, an interim uh, superintendent. Uh, the town was hurting financially. Um, I think Dr. Williams had on her plate as uh, we sat at a school committee one night together. Um, Dr. Williams, I think, read off 43 names of teachers and staffing uh, that we're going to, we were going to have to lay off as a school district because we didn't have any funding. Kathy and I uh, went into a room in the conference room um, alone and we talked about how we could turn this district around financially, socially, mentally, emotionally for teachers to know that we do care and we are, we, we do care. Um, and at that time, Kathy's like, I don't think anybody cares about us. And I said, no, I care about you. I know that Dr. Williams cares about you. We, the school committee cares about you. We can do this. And I asked Kathy Nicandros to take a zero. I asked the union, the, the EBEA, to take a zero. I knew if she would do that for us that I could go to the other associations and ask the same. We did that that year in that room. and, and Kathy, I don't want to give anything away, but I think you used a box of tissues as we sat in that room and argued and got to the end. What we did that day has given us longevity, supported our teachers, our staff, and our students. We are financially stable, not only on the school commit, not only on the school district side, but in the town. We've really become a, st a stable community so that we can support students. To your credit, not only what you did in the classroom as a teacher with your students, how they, how, they, how they come to you, how they trust you, but what you did as a union president. It's not easy to fill both of those seats. It's not easy to, to come into the office and have the banter with a superintendent that you met five minutes prior to that first meeting. Um, but Kathy, I, what we did then Gordon, I think you were here. I think uh, Ellen Pennington was on the committee. What, what we did that day has really 
helped us become what we are today. We haven't laid off a teacher. We've added teachers. We continue to add programming. We continue to do the things that kids, families, and communities need for everybody. We've grown. I want to thank you on behalf of myself, the school committee. I know that they would thank you for that because that is, it was part of the deal when you were the president. Um, but in your classroom as well from your students, we had a conversation today. Students still come to you. Um, I don't know if anybody of you know this, but uh, Kathy's daughter walked in the, or played in the Rose Bowl parade uh, in the band. Um, and Kath, uh, in Pasadena, right? And uh, Kathy uh, went out there and was able to watch her daughter. Um, and two years ago, I think during the pandemic, uh, Kathy also has her summer home at the Cape and probably will be moving there in a couple of years as they will convert to being down at the Cape and uh, walked in my office and said, hey, listen, if I have to get out a little bit early, can I? Because I just got a call. Uh, we've got a tree that went through the roof at uh, the Cape. Um, but she was in school. She stayed until I think the last class that you had um, was uh, right before, I think it was right before the pandemic. I think it was in the, the fall there. Um, she was always here, always with her kids and has done right by the district. I want to thank you for your years of service. Thank you. Thank you. I did, I've given my heart and soul and family to this district for 24 more years. Both of my children went to this district. Um, we're very successful here. My son actually had this um, <laughs> uh, So that was, um, so that too. So both of my children are very successful, very happy. And yeah, I'm, I'm ready to move on. <laughs> and you know, there comes time for everybody, but I will be grateful for everyone that I've known in this district for the last 20 years, whether it was in my role in the union, my role as a parent, um, for my role as a classroom teacher, meeting all the parents in this community. <laughs> I received from the parents and all of the students that I've seen up the long way. So, yes, thank you very much. Thank you. And was your son, he wasn't Mr. EBHS. Was he, was he Mr. EB? He, he was in Mr. No, he didn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> he won Best Dress. That's right. I knew there was something there that dress, night. Yes. That's right. Yes. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Mrs. Pantano. Your years of service from September 6th, uh, uh, September 6th, 2006, sept to September 7th, 2022. So Mrs. Pantano, you owe me a few more uh, days in September. <laughs> so I'm not gonna really talk about you tonight. Um, <laughs> so uh, actually Mrs. Pantano is going to come back and help us mentor uh, for the first couple of weeks of school, um, some young teachers, someone that's gonna take her position uh, and uh, she's the special education teacher here at the high school. She does inclusive teaching and she will be helping and mentoring um, and helping a young teacher uh, find their way around a building, uh, where to get your mail, how to get your, um, your emails and how to do those things. And I think you've done that a couple of times and helped other young teachers do those and scope that out. Um, you've also been out on the sports fields many nights helping out. Um, being the uh, facilitator out on the field, uh, working for uh, athletics. Um, you're from the community of East Bridgewater. Um, and Linda is also a member of their bargaining negotiation team. We met several times. Uh, we're still in one meeting right now. Um, what I can say about Linda, just whether it's in the classroom or what I understand of being in the classroom, but being with me, um, and having this conversation. One of the friendliest people on staff, always smiling, um, never curt when we're in conversations or having a meeting or if there's a situation that, um, that neither one of us understands and why we're here and talking about this. One of the most calm demeanors and you're always smiling. Um, and the students that you work with, are always having a good time with you. 
and even when I see you like walking in and out, you know, when you need a break or something, um, and I hear you go out the door, always smiling. I don't think I've ever seen you curt. Or I've never seen you um, upset. Um, maybe after you leave my office, after we've had some long conversations uh, as we negotiate or, or, or we pick away that, that language. Um, I want to thank you for your time on behalf of the school district. And, um, you know, when, when we have great conversations and we have a good relationship, it's hard when to say goodbye. So I wish you the best of luck. Um, I'm going to see you in September. So, I, so that day I'll get real emotional and let you go. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Thank you very much, too. It's really been a privilege. Absolutely. And you know, I've enjoyed our work together so much. And thank you for those words about smiling. People call me positive Pantian Wars. I think sometimes they might be jabbing me, but it's. <laughs> All good things start at Central School. <laughs> you know, it's, le it's, it's less muscles to smile than it is to frown. Isn't that what I heard you say in the hallway one day? <laughs> so I want to thank you, and congratulations on your retirement. I don't see Mrs. Ross, but Pam Ross is an uh, English teacher at the East Bridgewater Junior Senior High School. Her years of service are from 10-1, 2001 to June 30th, uh, 2022. Uh, she's a 21-year veteran. Uh, she taught English here. Uh, kids really liked her class. Um, she was a soccer coach, won a state championship for us here at East Bridgewater um, uh, for the girls. Uh, Lady, the Lady Vikings won a, a state championship, I think the year before I came in, it was, two, I want to say, 2014, 215. Um, so we won it in 216, came back around a year later after that. I want to wish Pam Ross um, and her family the best. And um, again, it's hard to lose good teachers. It's really hard to lose good teachers. So we wish her the best of luck in, in all her endeavors. And um, I know that she's not here right now, but congratulations to Pam Ross. I'm going to speak a little bit about the next person, but I then will pass it over to uh, Dr. Williams. A staple of the morning and afternoon at Central School will be so missed. When you drive up to Central School on the golf cart, in a car, we walk over, Sandy Kendrick is the face that you see in the driveway every morning and afternoon. Whether it's at the buses if we need her, or if it's out in front to hold back parents from getting in line too early mm -hmm. or too late. Or, no, you can't, you can't bust through this line. You've got to wait for the line to come and then come. Um, and she's always wearing her orange vest. <laughs> <laughs> Safety first. <laughs> Safety first, Mrs. Kedrick. Um, also worked for the before and after care. Has been in our programs in the summertime every year. I've seen her in classes um, at the Central School. The kids absolutely adore you. They, you adore them. I mean, obviously, all good things start at Central School. Um, Sandy last week was in a classroom. I was walking through. I saw Sandy. I walked in. I said, hey, Sandy, this is it, huh? As she was doing something for, I think, the, the uh, celebration. Uh, you did this to me, Sandy. Yeah, all good things go. I'm trying to get this done. <laughs> I don't really have a lot of time to talk to you, but that's great because we've got a lot of kindergartners here. <laughs> so I said, okay, well, good job. I'll see you. And then she said, I'm going to see be, I, I think it was, I'm going to see you over the summer. Okay, we'll see you. We kept going. But that's Sandy. <laughs> Mrs. Byrne, Mrs. Nichols, I, I can't tell you. They, they're, they're at a loss of words because I saw, I saw Mrs. Byrne today. You're, you will be sorely missed over there. You are a staple. You are a backbone uh, for us, knowing that we can count on you when we need help. Um, if you've never been there when we get the flu, when I say we, Central School gets the flu and it goes from one room to the next room very quickly down the hallway, Sandy Kendrick is always one that does not get the flu and ends up staying in a classroom to help us before we can pull a teacher to do this, to get more kids, call parents, and, and Sandy knows probably every parent uh, in East Bridgewater. And when they come up, hi, Mrs. Kendrick, 
I don't think I ever hear anybody call you Sandy. As long as, hi, Mrs. Kendrick, um, you'll be missed. And thank you for, oh, thank you. Thank you for all you've done. Dr. Williams? Yeah, I mean, echoing what the superintendent, I think you've worked in every grade level, probably every classroom. You've even been, been seen at the main office answering phones, um, <laughs> helping custodians clean up vomit. I mean, you have done it all, and you, till the final day of being here, you're always been willing to, you need that, I will do that. Somebody needs to take care of that. And speaking of the, the crossing guard, you probably remember when the time came about where we needed people out there because traffic was getting too hectic, and there was lots of reluctancy to be out there, people afraid they were going to get hit by a car, or they didn't want to open someone's door, um, and you were the first person, do you need me there? I can be there. Do I need to come in early? I can come in early. Always a willingness to do whatever it took to make sure that those students were at school and safe while they were there. Um, you are the jack of all trades. Uh, I'm lucky you're my neighbor, so I'll still continue <laughs> to see you. Um, but the epitome of Central School, I think, you know, when, when families think of Central School, they think of a warm and welcoming environment, and that's what you are every day through and through. Um, so you have helped to shape Central School and make it the school that it is. So come back anytime. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Billy! <laughs> Mr. Robertson, your years of service are from September 29, 1986 to June 30th, 2022. 36 year veteran of the East Bridgewater School District. He's known as the Billy Goat for lots of reasons. He's the hardest worker. He never stops. He's always on the move. It's probably not as fast as you did back in 1986, Billy. <laughs> but he's still doing it. You call over to Mitchell School, or you get a call that says, well, we don't have any heat. And Andrew, Mr. Gentile, will say, but Billy's down there. He knows how to fix it. He's fixed the furnace, he's fixed the oil tank, stopped it from leaking, he's turned off water that has broken pipes at an end of a building so it wouldn't freeze. He's gone up on the roof millions of times probably now, and he knows exactly where every leak is and where every hole and every patch is. He'll tell you that the reason that some place is leaking or that there's a problem is because of this area over here. And I've been telling them for 30 years to fix this place. And nobody can do it. He'll tell us that when we changed, when we converted the uh, bathrooms at the Mitchell School, one of the bathrooms over from uh, the, the tub sinks to the standalones, he knew there was going to be an issue because he knew there was going to be too much uh, pressure in that water. No one wanted to believe him. We've now since changed that to make it so it's not spurting out uh, at the boys um, in the bathroom. He'll also tell us when we pick colors, that's not a nice color. <laughs> <laughs> that's not going to work here. That's not good. He's the first guy to take down the tables in the cafeteria. He's the first guy to put them out. And he makes sure that every student has a clean and dry place every morning to come into. Billy, you're a man of many, many, many words, right? <laughs> That's why you and John Shea get along so well. <laughs> when John Shea goes down, I say, everything get fixed. <laughs> That's what I get. I get, Billy says, yup, so yeah. Billy, thank you. There's not a day that we haven't come in uh, since I have been here for seven years where Billy hasn't shoveled, snowblowed, driven a truck with a plow on it, 
make sure that a glass that has been broken gets fixed on that day. If he had to duct tape something together, he did and got us through the day. We've never lost heat that he didn't get in and fix. He knows room, Mrs. McDermott's room was cold a couple of times and we've gotten her heat immediately or he'll go out and get you a heater. Billy, you are that guy that we went to and that we still go to and we still ask for help. And the Billy Goat is just, man, you can climb any mountain. Nothing was too high or icy to get up on. We appreciate all you ever did and all you do for us. And I know that if I could uh, talk um, for Mrs. Ra uh, I think you, was it for the before and after care? Uh, you were Santa Claus? I don't know why, I don't take that away from the real Santa Claus, but he tried a really good impression of a uh, great Santa Claus um, on the float, was it three, what, five years ago, five, six years ago. Um, you did a nice job on that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Billy, congratulations. I wish you the best of luck. I know you'll be at the beach tomorrow or in a couple weeks just sitting there, lounging out there or, or wherever you're going to go. But we wish you the best of luck. Congratulations, Billy. Pardon? Last one. <laughs> that was two things. John, did John tell you to say that? <laughs> John, do you want to? Did you want to add anything about Billy? Yeah. Yeah. And I still am correct. <laughs> <laughs> and Kathy's children went through seven. <laughs> um, John Shea uh, oversees. You know, I, Billy, uh, you brought a, brought a uh, an old school attitude to work. Showed up every day. Worked hard. Well, I'm certainly going to miss that. You made my life easier. I'm certainly going to miss that. I'm really going to miss your dry sense of humor. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Billy. <laughs> Thank you, Billy. The last is, uh, oh, the superintendent's administrative assistant. Her years of service have been from June 24th, uh, 2002 to uh, June 30th, 2022, 20 years of service here at the East Bridgewater Public School District, and that's Barbara Polisi. Uh, <laughs> Barbara uh, was brought, or uh, was asked to come to the district by former superintendent, uh, Margaret Stroney, um, who came from Pembroke, who worked with Barbara in Pembroke. She came here, um, and when a administrator calls someone from another district and says I would like you to come and follow me it must mean that you're a trusted friend and confidant and I can say that um, here as well you are a loyal moral one of the most ethical person people I've ever met you definitely are a superintendent's confident when you close the door. There is nothing we haven't said to each other, haven't argued about, and come to the best resolution for this district. There are times that we've been in that office till 10 o'clock at night where Frank has called and said, is there a problem? And Frank is her <laughs> husband. Um, is there a problem or are you coming home? The, long, the, the, the knowledge that Barbara brings with her into the office supports the decisions that we make going forward. There are times that we try to make a decision that would be best, that, we, that I feel is best for the direction of the district. Barbara has come into the office and given me the background of something, and it has, may have changed my decision or altered it, or maybe slowed it up or even pushed it in a different direction. We are the keeper of the records. We are the keeper of the file. She speaks to the attorney as if she is me, which is 
what they do, what your, what your assistants do, because they like talking to them. She takes care of everything. She has one set of keys that open a file a cabinet that's locked every night when she leaves because no one else can go in there besides Barbara, which is a good thing because I take things out and put them there and I forget and I move around and I keep going. A couple Fridays ago, we met Barbara's family. It was like an Italian fest in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Your family's wonderful. Um, I got to meet her sons. I now know who your favorite one is. <laughs> uh, it, this, it's, this is hard um, and very difficult for me to say goodbye. We have another week together. We'll walk out on the 30th together. Um, I, don't, I don't know much more to say, Barbara, than thank you and what you brought to the district. Crying, we'll all start crying. Um, what you brought to the district is just an amazing uh, way for our, our new assistant to begin in the office. You have worked with her since June 1st. I don't think I've ever seen anybody stand so close to another person as I watch Kelly follow you around the office. I think she's trying to emulate and she'll be her own person and we understand that. Um, but I think my direction to her or my directive to her was stay as close to her as you can. And so hopefully everything rubs off on you. We're gonna have to call you for some things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, when you're in this business this long as Barbara has been, especially with Desi, Barbara can call the Department of Education and they say, hi Barbara, how are you? I need this done right now. Um, and I, there's another lady um, up there that's one of the assistants who knows Barbara and I think has been around 20 years and they know each other. Barbara can call the MSBA and they know her. Um, Barbara can call our attorney's office and they know her. Barbara has spoken to George Samia, Rocco, Brian, and our new town administrator. And they all take her call. That's what a true assistant is. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dr. Williams, you had? We really are gonna call you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't change your number. <laughs> and it, it, you know, it's to a, a point where I just start talking and you know exactly what we're talking about, where it is, what the last conversation was about it, and what the resolution was. And the, the history that you have in that office, the versatility you have to have worked with everybody who has been in that office, um, it speaks volumes to your professionalism, speaks volumes to your ability to um, adjust and adapt to the styles that have been in there uh, and to the superintendent's point. But always having that ability to help shed additional light on things, which isn't always seen in our roles, and you've been able to bring that perspective into it to help us make a more informed decision, to help us um, be more clear in our, our thinking, um, and also the, the family aspect that you brought into the office you know always asking about our families always checking in about our weekends and how we're doing personally uh, how we're doing emotionally uh, and not just a professional relationship and that certainly will be missed and Barbara I, I just wanted to one more thing will before we close and I know that John has so many good things to say about Barbara and did you, did you bring the roses and waiting for tomorrow tomorrow <laughs> Um, I told this story like two Fridays ago and I want everybody to hear it in the community. During COVID, we walked around with John, Deb Vaughn, Doug, and John, and John Shea in the office, and Deb, and Deb Vaughn and Barbara. 
we treated it like every other day. The smart one was Dr. Williams went home and made an office at her house. She was the smart one because we, we fought up here. We were, it was tough. And one day Barbara comes in and she goes, I'm out of here. I've had it. I'm working from home. Call me. Just call me. So she calls Frank, her husband. And he comes and he gets her Chromebook and her chair. She wants to take her chair because that's how she's going to think at home. She needs her chair. So he takes her chair. That was great. She went home. Her son and daughter-in-law had just moved in because they were looking for a home and they couldn't buy a home because it was during the pandemic and it all happened all at once. So they were there. And they both work. And Frank was still working. He wasn't retired then. And Barbara went home. And everything was wonderful until the following Monday, five days later, Frank and Barbara come up in the chair and in a car. I see Frank take the chair out of the truck. <laughs> She's walking ahead of him. And it was wonderful. She came back five days later because it was so great at home to work with your family. And he brought your chair back. <laughs> so although times get hard in our office, you came back. I wish you the best of luck. <laughs> I wish you the best of luck. I don't know if the school committee wants to add anything. Ellen, I will miss you terribly. Can't call You're her. You're only right a now. phone call away, and you only have <laughs> <a> Pembroke. <laughs> I never lose a phone number. I don't. Okay. Thank you. I, my luck to be able to be there to work with people I've worked with. Been missed a lot. Day in and day out, but enjoy the office. We left a lot. You tell stories and things about all the different superintendents and stuff. I appreciate all your words of wisdom and you being a good listener. Thank you. And thank you for all your hard work. Thank you for all of your hard work. Thank you. Thank you. I would if like I, to. If I could add one thing, I'm sorry. I, um, I'm envious. I've always been and probably always will be of the roles that all of you fill. Um, it's not that you're retired and I want that. I'm retired myself. <laughs> but when I got to the end of my career, I, as I reflected on it, I said, well, was it successful? And to me, this, the measure of success for me was that I make a positive difference. Well, I always think of teachers. Well. I might have made a positive difference to a certain extent, but I'm not a teacher. And uh, I think I see my own kids have been through the school system. I see how they've benefited from all of your teachings and wisdoms and, and all. And I know the impact you've had on their lives. Um, and it's just remarkable. And it's probably one of the reasons I opted to join the school committee now, and I had done it before that I've always admired the whole process that all of you combine together and, and do and make such an impact on our children. And I just know the impact they've had. I, we all reflect on ourselves. I mean, I might not be able to name every teacher I have ever had, but I've recognized their faces um, and can remember what they taught, how they taught, how they spoke, what, how they dressed. Um, role model for me uh, as a student, as I'm sure you are for every student that comes through you. If, you. if you think about the number of children that come through your classroom, man, it is so impressive. I thank you as a parent. I thank you as a member of our community. And I just thank you as one human being to another. I, you know, it, it's so admirable. I, I hope you feel as good reflecting on your career as I think you should. Uh, so thank you all very much. Appreciate it.
Thank you. Thank have, you. A, have a great summer. Thank you. Oh, he is doing awesome. I will. Have a great summer. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> I know, right? No, I'm going to miss them. Did you have any Someone of those? Leave something on what's on that chair right there. Um, no, actually. The, they didn't have any oh, of them? But the they are me. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have one of them? No. <laughs> and next up, uh, we have Mr. John Shea to give us a fiscal 22 financial update. So I, I handed out the uh, update earlier tonight. We are on the uh, last week of school and we're checking the mail every day and we're checking emails every day. We're chewing our fingernails, making sure we've gotten everything right. And uh, I, think we, uh, I think we've done a good job. Uh, Joanne and I are checking the, the uh, balances every day, sometimes twice a day, sometimes three times a day. Um, but non-salary, on the non-salary line, we've had 3.3 .3 million in a budget, in the budget. We have total expenses as of today of 3.2 million, 3 million 266,000. We have encumbrances uh, for expenses to be paid of 275,000. Right now, we have an available balance of 46547 um, Non-salary, uh, for the salary, we have an appropriation of 18666000 dollars We have total expenses uh, through today of 15745000 We have an available balance of $2.9 million. Um, the last payroll. Uh, is being processed as we speak. Uh, that payroll is 713000 That's not in these numbers. Uh, we also will be accruing teacher salary for the summer because they, they get paid over the whole year for this fiscal year. So we accrue that at the end of the, at the, end of the year. That accrual will be, uh, I'm still working on that, but about $2.1 so if you take that 2.1 million and 713,000, we have um, estimating expenses, additional expenses of 2,878,000. So I feel as though we are in good shape. That 46,000 of available balance and non-salary, I'm sure we may have uh, some additional expenses to come in. We always have a, a year-end legal, legal fee and a couple uh, other year-end uh, utility uh, expenses, but I, I think we're in good shape. Yeah. Now, anything that happens over the summer goes to next fiscal year? Correct. Yep. Any questions on that? Revolving fund balances. Uh, school lunch right now has a balance of 456000 You can see that's a significant increase from last year. Um, that, ju uh, you know, that just goes to the, the management in our food service program is just is top notch. Outstanding. Uh, we do have uh, some expenses that have not hit. Uh, Deb Vaughn is looking, uh, or we're implementing a new POS system um, at all three schools. We are improving the techno technology in each of the manager's offices, the computers, monitors, printers. I mean, they haven't been update, updated in years and years. So um, Deb's also looking at, uh, at other uh, items like a cooler for the new cooler for the high school. And we're, improving, we're going to improve uh, the Wi-Fi in the central school. So we will be spending some of that money down, but um, Deb Vaughn has done a great job with the school lunch program. Circuit breaker, you see we have a, a balance here of 500, about 525,000. Uh, we'll be prepaying um, tuitions for next year in the amount of 306,000. So at the end of the year, we, we should have a balance in that account of about 219,000. 
school choice you could see is, pr is pretty similar to where we were last year. Athletic fund uh, is a little lower than we were last year, and you know that I've explained that in the past with the the additional uh, students in the uh, free and reduced uh, additional expenses for referees uh, increases in their uh, cost uh, increases in busing. So it's thirty nine thousand, uh, almost forty thousand. Uh, I think that we increase the budget next year for athletics, so we're, we're in good shape. Preschool uh, has a negative balance right now, like it did last year at this time. That will be gone by the end of the year. Let's go down. School building rental is, uh, is a little lower than uh, we were last year. We've, uh, we've done a, a number of improvements in the uh, auditorium. We, we refinished the floor. We had to fix screens at both schools. Uh, the projector at the Mitchell School we had to replace, so that, that's what we used that for. Or also, uh, we've had a lot of uh, rentals over the past couple of weeks, so the revenue from that will be coming in over the over the next couple of weeks. It should be about twenty thousand, Joanne, in additional revenue that'll be coming in. Before and after care uh, busing, similar to last year. Before and after care, a little higher than than last year. Little Vikings, you can see it has a, a, a very high balance, but that's because the revenue has come in, but the expenses have not for the summer program. And music drama, and the dramas and the after school activities are, are all consistent to where they've been in prior years. I'm happy to answer any, uh, any questions that you may have. Is the busing the same situation as the after? Um Little Vikings, is that like the fees that have come in the last week or so? No. Or no? no. Okay. No. The fees have come in, but usually they, the fees from this month, they usually post them to the system at the end okay, of the yeah. month. I mean, the deadline was just Friday. So right. Yeah. Okay. yeah, those fees will be recorded uh, by June 30th. Um, sped tuition and revolving. It, that that is uh, tuitions from other schools, which has decreased. Um, the the number of students that have been coming here from from other schools, so to have that uh, to be a, a positive balance, uh, I'm pretty happy with that right now. Dude, we open up a, if we open up a classroom that someone doesn't have, we'll tuition them in. So we'll charge them, or, or Jay, Jay Fallon, will, West Bridgewater is one of them, who we work with a lot. If we'll open up the classroom here, they'll send a, a child over that needs the specific type of room. That's what that, that's what that one is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and we have an update on summer activity programs with Dr. Gina Williams. So as soon as Ms. Shea Cleans up the books for the end of the year. I start spending the money <laughs> I want. Um, so you'll see on uh, this handout uh, at the top is the professional activities that staff will be involved in over the summer. Uh, we've run about five uh, book clubs at this point in time for professional development. We've got two new book clubs running this summer. Um, you can see Innovate Inside the Box and UDL and Blended Learning, both books by Katie Novak. Um, and that's a lot of the work that we've been doing with Universal Design for Learning, Inclusive Practices. Uh, so we have two facilitators for that. They'll do that virtually over the summer with staff. And we've also given the opportunity for staff members in other districts to take advantage. Um, and so it's sort of self-funding. We pay for the books based on um, those that are taking advantage um, of the book clubs from other districts, and it's free for our staff members. So it's been very successful over the last handful of years. So I'm glad that we have two new books this summer. Um, the Professional Development Academy uh, approves of some of mini work. Um, we put out initiatives um, that we would like people to be part of over the summer. Um, and then they can write a proposal for the project that they would like to do. Um, so we had 30 projects that we approved. Uh, 44 staff members are involved in those projects um, and $16,000 in funds. So they would earn uh, payment for the work that they do. The work that they're creating would be work that would be then shared with their grade level colleagues, their department colleagues, or as the building as a whole. So 
That's why we always want to make sure they're pre-approved so that we know that they're project and initiatives that are focused around our strategic plan and our goals. So we're excited that um, as many people wanted to take advantage of, of working over the summer. We are also are starting our own mentor training uh, in years past with teachers who are interested in being mentor teachers to new teachers or novice teachers. We would typically pay for them to go to that training. Uh, and now we have a, a good pool of um, staff members who have just recently been trained that we're going to work this summer to create our own in-district uh, training program for teachers who wish to be mentors. Uh, so it's great. We've got two teachers from every building along with uh, building level and district uh, leadership. So we'll be ready to roll that out in the fall. And then, as always, uh, we have our week of new staff induction. So the last week before uh, all staff come back, it's an opportunity for new staff to get acclimated uh, to each of their buildings, but also get acclimated to the programming we have within the school district so that they're ready to start the first day uh, feeling somewhat grounded um, in their role. And then the bottom half is the student programming uh, we've got going on. So although the summer is a little bit of a, a wind down, it certainly is uh, just as busy um, day to day in the buildings with uh, extended activities for our students. So uh, the first three bullets are things that we've been um, doing for quite some time now. We have our extended school year program going on, our little Vikings going on, and of course before and after care that will be offered to students throughout the summer. Uh, some new things uh, that we're offering this summer is um, we've had summer reading uh, for the students and um, we've noticed that there's been some reluctancy for students to get that summer reading done. Um, so this year we decided to focus our efforts on having facilitators that will weekly um, be online to talk to students about the books that they're reading. So it'll look a little different from grade level to grade level. At, the elementary school, uh, because their books are quicker reads, uh, it'll be a different book every week that the facilitator will be online to read. Um, as you get into the upper grades, uh, each of the facilitators has chosen one of the books from the book list, um, and students will be able to go on to that link weekly with check-ins, talk about um, where they're at with the book, talk about uh, what's happening in the book, and just keep that motivation alive. So um, that is... Uh, invitation for students uh, that we want to specifically target but the links will be provided to all students uh, if parents want them jumping on throughout the summer um, so that will go out the end of this week the invitations will go out to students that we've uh, selected to take part in it uh, but then we'll make sure that those links get out to families next week as well so if they're choosing which book they might lean towards a book that will be read uh, on a weekly basis so that's new um, at the junior senior level, we have three positions. Uh, we have our credit recovery, so Edgenuity is an online program we use for students who need to um, complete a, a course. So we'll have um, a staff member overseeing that and conducting check-ins with students to make sure they're on track to complete their course over the summer. Uh, as well as we'll have an adjustment counselor and a special education teacher who will be available all summer to students for social emotional needs. Uh, or academic supports um, and that's just something we found is extremely beneficial uh, for students who need uh, year-round support um, if they're in any of our recovery programs uh, we want to make sure someone's checking in and giving them the tutoring that they need uh, and certainly students who were seeing our adjustment counselors throughout the school year we don't want gaps to form and, and make sure that there's someone available to them in the summer as well and then uh, the jump start back to school so a little bit of an abbreviated uh, program from our acceleration academies. Uh, we found that our acceleration academies were most well attended that week before students came back to school as opposed to throughout the summer. So that's where we've decided to really focus our efforts uh, in having Jump Start Back to School five day program uh, for students in each of the three schools. Uh, and it will be a combination of academic support as well as uh, social emotional learning. And then for all students transitioning to a new school building, we'll have level up days. Uh, each uh, grade level will have a, a specific day. I think uh, Lilia mentioned at the junior senior high, it'll be August 23rd. That will invite all incoming seventh and ninth graders. Um, at the Mitchell School, all incoming third graders will come on the 24th of August. And for Central School, all incoming kindergartners will come on the 25th. 
So all of this will be shared out through Parent Square uh, for parents so that they're aware, as well as uh, invitation only um, programs will, will reach specifically out to those families. But all the offerings um, that are open to all children will be sent out through Parent Square. Um, do you happen to know about the reading list, how that will be distributed, uh, probably on Parent Square also? Or? So summer reading went out. Oh. Um, last week that went out. So that's in Parent Square. Um, the theme is friendship, so it's a district-wide theme. Um, it's a collection of books at the uh, Central School. Uh, Mitchell School, they have designated a book per grade level. Um, I actually might have it here. Um, and then at the Junior Senior High School, it is a collection of books. They've given you uh, grade um, ranges, uh, and the requirement is that they complete two books, uh, very similar to last year where they'll uh, complete a compare and contrast of those books around the themes. So, Thank you. Would like me to resend that? I can certainly do that, but oh, it no, will no. be in Parent Square. So I've just been look. crazy busy and we'll find it. I actually went through the list of my kids and they were pretty excited about the offerings. Mm -hmm. Maybe better than previous years mm -hmm. where they were excited there was they've already got their books picked out. And That's right. <laughs> so, so and the public involved. library is very helpful. They have the list already and yep. they've started working on the collection as well so that um, those offerings will be available at the public library if families can't find them. The, yeah, the public library is always very supportive. They always have extra books on hand and they, they're prepared. Yeah, I think we yep. get our own like bookshelf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're yeah. nice. <laughs> and it's next to the ice cream so you can <laughs> have, <laughs> next Skinner's. They can What's have an ice cream and read a book. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. and that's a big thanks to our summer reading committee. We have members from every school um, that represent um, on the committee, so well-rounded thoughts on the developmental levels of students and the interest level of students. So, thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Um, and let's see. Oh, so we have in in our packet here. We have uh, recommended changes to FY23 Central School, Gordon W. Mitchell School, and East Bridgewater Junior Senior High School uh, student parent handbooks. And um, most of them are just like date changes, name changes. That's about it on that one. And then um, that's on the Central School. Mitchell School is also just uh, some dates. Just like it's housekeeping, pretty much general housekeeping, and removing of COVID stuff. Um, we, just on the COVID, that Desi is having webinars all throughout the summer right now, um, and Karen is still. Um, she was on a webinar last week with Desi. They're going to keep us going all the way through. Um, so we had the 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 schools. I took them out of the handbooks for the individual schools. We'll do one for the district as it comes back around. And then we'll come to you for uh, the policy or how you want to work it uh, come August. But Desi, we are going to continue um, with the information. And he's just doing informational web, uh, webinars at this time. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, then with the high school, same thing. It's just a lot of housekeeping. Uh, one thing, the athletic registration requirements, the fee was approved a while back, and this is just um, making it the accurate fee of uh, because it's really 300 and 500 and then um, just housekeeping stuff does anybody have any questions on any of it no. and if there is um, any questions you can certainly um, bring them to the next school committee or email them to me and I will give them to the principals and then they'll come they'll uh, they're exhausted right now mm -hmm. um, so I sort of gave them the night off uh, it's like the marathon to the finish. It was a marathon today for all of them. Uh, Mitchell School graduation was this morning. It was a full house. Uh, I couldn't even drive in with a car, so uh, <laughs> people were walking uh, from my from town square, from my, my understanding. So I'm just curious <clears throat> the way they're referenced. For instance, Central School is referenced the parents' handbook. The other two schools just reference the school handbook. So. Is it a student handbook? Is it a parent handbook? Or is it just well, called a handbook? I'm going to guess and say the central school is like parents because the kids don't really read it because it's like, right. you know. And then the Mitchell and Mitchell and um, high school, the kids are supposed to read them. They're supposed to go through them or whatever with the parents, right? Yeah, yeah. so it's dual signatures at the other two buildings, whereas right. it's parent signature at the elementary. Okay, thank you. Um, 
And next up we have a review of the Central School, Gordon W. Mitchell School, and East Bridgeboro Junior Senior High School improvement plans for the 22-23 school year. And the materials are enclosed. They should look familiar to you. They will, they will follow your strategic plan. Or our strategic plan. And if, if anybody has any questions, you just have to get them uh, get them in bef in enough time to be put on the agenda for the next meeting. Sure. Yeah. So we would need them. Let's see, our meeting's next Tuesday. So I mean, if you have any questions about anything, you can always um, yeah. you can always you know Liz can get somebody can get back to you or like email me or Liz, and then if we wanted to come to the next meeting, then they would have to let us know by, right, I'll just, by Thursday morning because it has to get on the agenda to be posted. Mm -hmm. Um, what I thought was particularly helpful on the Central School is that <clears throat> they listed what uh, their accomplishments were for prior year. Yeah. Where I didn't see that for the other two, but not, I'm sure they exist. But uh, it's really helpful to kind of look back and say, oh, wow, look at what they achieved uh, mm -hmm. last year. It'd be nice to see what the actual objectives were. Are they any different? Probably not. But I just thought that would be helpful to have that in there. Sure. Okay. Anybody have any questions now? No. Okay. Um, I don't see anyone for public comment. Pass that. And next up, we have. Um, I would take a motion to approve school committee meeting minutes from May twenty fourth, twenty twenty two, June seventh, twenty twenty two, and June thirteenth, twenty twenty two. So moved. Moved by Amanda. Second. Second by Lauren. Thank you for raising your hand because I couldn't <laughs> tell if it was you or Becky. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 And I would take a motion to uh, approve accounts payable warrant 51 SV dated 615-2022. So moved. Moved by Amanda. <coughs> Second. Second by Scott. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, and I would take a motion to approve payroll warrant 52 PS dated 622-22. So moved. Moved by Amanda. Um, Second. Second by uh, Scott. All in favor? Do we, do we have a copy of that? I didn't see a copy. A of copy that. of what? The, the payroll? Is it in? It's oh. in there. It is? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so I must have just skipped over it. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay. So we voted on that. <coughs> um, we? You, we got a second. We didn't vote. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thanks, Amanda. Um, I would take a motion to approve the fiscal year 23 of the East Bridgewater Student Activity Account Protocol and Operational Procedures. So no moved. changes for FY23. So we're approving the same Student Activity Account Protocol and oper Operational Procedures that we're required to approve every year. So moved. Moved by Amanda. Second. Second by Lauren. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, and I, oh, let's see. I would take a motion to, after review, approve the school committee meeting schedule for 2022-23 school year. So moved. Um, there was one thing. I Hold on one second. Oh, did you, you, you moved it. Amanda moved it. Who's the, who, she made a motion, so who's the second? Can I ask a question? Yeah, but let's do the second first, then, then we'll do discussion. Second. second by Becky in discussion. Oh, that's me again. Yeah. Um, the gap, August 23rd and September 20th, that's accurate? Uh, yes. Okay. Just um, really busy. Okay. Yeah. And I was, who, does anybody have a calendar? I just wanna see. Yep. Thank you. Do you want this calendar? Uh, like I just wanna see like a calendar out so I can c count weeks. Just for one second. What weeks? We can, August want, 20th. Uh, September. September. It's four, four weeks. August 23rd. Oh, so October. October. One, two, three. And then one, two. And then the other 25th. I guess that's right. There was one. I, I, don't, I can't remember if I emailed Barbara. 
Okay. Is everybody fine with this calendar? Yes. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, that's it. I feel like we have a slow me. Oh, I knew there was something else. Um, we have, I, I passed out to everybody the MASC uh, conference packet that Barbara so nicely copied for all of us. Um, if anybody wants to go, if you if you know if you're going to be able to go, you can let Barbara know or Kelly um, before July 15th. If you let them know before July 15th, we get a discount. And um, if you let her know, then she will get you scheduled, get you set up to go. Um, and that's it. I just wanted to make I'll, sure. I'll leave mine on her desk. I told her I'd drop it off. So. Okay. And I think that's it. Anything else, Superintendent? Oh, second. Oh, did I miss that? Yeah. I'm yeah. so sorry. I take a motion to. I don't usually do that. I would take a motion to approve the Central School, Gordon W. Mitchell School, and East Bridgeville Junior Senior High School handbook changes for the 22-23 school year. So moved. Moved by Amanda. Second. Second by Scott. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for picking up on that. Um, anything else? This tomorrow's half a day. Good luck, parents. <laughs> Pools and be very careful in pools. I just I did want to mention um, that we did have a second grader uh, that, or our whole second grade, we started a program uh, with the YMCA and Waterwise, and all of our second graders went and um, a pool party at uh, uh, one of our homes uh, last week. A second grader went to a pool party and um, helped a little friend who was struggling in the water, and it could have turned out. Uh, very badly. She stayed very calm, um, stayed focused, and, and helped the uh, helped her friend out of the pool. Um, it's important, and I think that it's showing that uh, what we do um, in schools works with uh, with our families and our community. And it, it's that to me is that sums up the year of Water Wise and Central School and, and the entire district. And just that was just a tremendous story we heard. So. I did speak to Ms. Anderson, uh, went over to Mitchell School last week, got to speak with her for a few minutes. Ms. Anderson is our music teacher at the Mitchell School, an unfortunate um, uh, accident in her home, or it wasn't an accident, but uh, her home had a fire and it destroyed her entire home. Um, you know, like she said to me the other day, she was thankful to her friends of East Bridgewater and the school committee, uh, the district, the staff, the teachers, and even the students uh, were so, you know, friendly when she came back. They were so so uh, so happy to see her. She was happy to see them. She said it really it, it, uh, picked up her spirits. Uh, we wish the best to her and her family. Um, but uh, we get a half a day tomorrow. I think um, I think the kids are ready. <laughs> uh, um, they were yelling and screaming today. I think they'll be really yelling and screaming tomorrow. But it's always uh, it's bittersweet as we end to see the kids go. We're, we're here, but it is bittersweet to watch the kids get on the bus or in the cars or even on their bikes for the first time when their parents start letting them ride their bikes home. So um, if anybody needs us, we're here in the office all, all summer long. There will be a change. You won't hear Barbara. You'll hear, start to hear Kelly. Um, but June 30th is it, and then we'll go into the 4th of July, but we're still open, and then the following week is Little Vikings, and ESY, ESY starts right away. So. I hope everybody has a happy, healthy, and safe summer. Yes. And, oh, sorry, go ahead. Buddy. Sorry, one question. Do we have the feedback for Superintendent Legault on her? Next week. We have a meeting next Tuesday. Yeah, next Tuesday, the 28th. Okay. What time, do you remember so what you time we decided six or six thirty? <laughs> Clearly, I am not reliable. I think it's, it's, <laughs> in the, it's in the minutes, but I think we decided six. We did six. 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 six o'clock next we Tuesday, the twenty eighth. Okay, thank you. Be there and be square, Gordon. He's going to be in the Caribbean. No, he's not. <laughs> he's now he's right be. here, smiling with us. <laughs> Wacky shirt Tuesday. Are we here to call good old? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. We
hope you have a happy, healthy, and safe summer. And um, and I wanted to say thank you for, I don't know, how, well, I was going to ask you how many years the pool, the swimming uh, arrangement with the Y has been going on. Well, we, <laughs> we had the meeting right before the pandemic, and then it was put on hold. Uh, this is our first real full, full year of... Uh, they, water didn't wise they go over there though they didn't they go over there before i, I could we did but, but we had the meeting before the pandemic we started to go we had a couple of meetings with done. the second grade then it's shut down then it was all shut down and then uh we were ready to go but the y was still had um wasn't doing the swimming at that point this year was our first real full year of it um like from start to finish yep. and i tell you i we were both uh, both of us had gone down uh, i went down it is amazing if you start from the beginning with the class and then you go, you know, the six week or whatever, the six weeks, this is the full quarter, it's like a full quarter, like six weeks down, it is amazing to watch the kids, like from not wanting to get in to then swimming all the way down. And um, it was great. And it just confidence building. Uh, they had fun. It was a social setting. Uh, do you have a second grader, Scott? No. No. Uh, but parents could go down and watch if they wanted to. They, they would stay off to the side a little bit. Um, it was really, it was great. It was really neat. Swimming is an important skill to have. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm glad that we have that. I'm glad we do that in our district. It's water safety, so yeah. they, it's not. Yeah. You're not learning. Yeah. But safety, yeah. Yeah. that's important. Water, water safety, safety is important. Mm -hmm. But it, it's a confidence builder. And I think, you know, we saw kids that just, didn't even want to let me you know as they first started uh, holding on. And Mrs. Byrne will tell you, we've had kids that, you know, just didn't want to even go down the ladder. And then at the end, they're the first ones like, let's go. I know how to do this. You know, they, they learned how, you know, in the boat, they learned how to, you know, sit in the boat. And if it turned over, what to do. And um, they learned, you know, not to grab someone in the water to try to help them, but get out first and, and you know, throw a towel or put their hand out or tell so get an adult. Um, it, Throw, don't go. Throw, don't go. Uh, but it was a really, it was, uh, I think it's, it's, it's great for our kids. I think our parents, have, I don't, there was a little reluctancy, but I think once we started getting into it, people were like, wow, they really are doing a good job. They're, you know, we're, we're, they're, get them on the bus, we send them down, we get them off the, off the bus. So it's, it's been good. Um, Those are the types of skills they'll remember forever. Right. This, I can only speak from my own experience because I, I used to be a lifeguard. And their skills, like the water safety skills, they'll know, they'll remember them. That's good. Thank you. Well, it's nice, too, for a community builder. We work with the YMCA. I was just going to say, I love the community connections. Yeah. I think that's critical. Yeah. For the I, and it's good because community. And people get to see the kids getting off the bus going in. They get to see them coming out. I know that some grandparents have been there working out and have saw the kids, <laughs> um, you know, and, you know, waving. And so it's, um, it's nice, and it gets us out to go down and see the kids doing something off campus, so, which was nice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. At this time, I would take a motion to adjourn this meeting. So moved. Moved by Amanda. Second. Second by, uh, let's see, me, me. Becky. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Gotta get, uh, uh, <laughs> we gotta get one of those buzzers. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful, there might be a buzzer on one of the phones. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone.